How's it going, everybody? Welcome back to the Blue Shit Dingo. Welcome back to the Fruit of Grisaya. And, uh, yeah, last episode, I, 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 it was like, we only did one scene. I was in it for a while, and we did a lot of talking. I'm gonna try not do that this time, but, you know, whatever happens, happens. It's inspiration strikes, whatever. It's just, we, we go with the flow here. But, uh, things are going pretty well-ish. Again, like, it's like, it's good. Like, there's nothing, I've enjoyed every episode we've recorded so far. But it really started to like feel like, is there anything else that's going to be happening besides just us being at school? It keeps hinting at these really interesting like concepts and ideas of like uh, where Yuji came from or like like where these girls came from, like what their backgrounds are. It keeps dropping like little hints, but then we don't get any follow through with it yet. Like maybe it's just going for the long payoff, but it's also it just feels like. It's just kind of like, we're just here at school, just doing stuff, school things, which is, again, it's kind of fine, but I don't know. Like, I, I, I wonder if it's building towards something or if we're just going to be, if this is literally just like a going to a weird school dating sim, which is fine if that's the case. But like, it just has a lot of undertext for something that's simple, like as a concept. It, it feels like it's really trying to build a lot of intrigue. So I, 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 I think there's more, but I... It just, it just feels like we haven't seen any yet, so I'm looking forward to seeing some, hopefully. But I don't know what to expect for today. Let's kick back, relax, hope you enjoy yourselves, and uh, let's just get started. There's no gym teacher in this school, but that hasn't stopped me shamelessly, uh, the, some shameless individual from putting physical education on our schedule. A healthy spirit dwells in a healthy body. It's easy to laugh these words off as a re uh, relic of the baby boomer generation, Neanderthal obsessed, obsession with build character through guts and willpower, but... In fact, it seems there's actually a good amount of scientific data linking mere moderate physical exercise to positive psychotropic effects. I mean, yeah, but the thing is, like, you can't, you can't say one size fits all. Like, all those stupid memes people say is, like, you don't need a bottle of, of pills to cure your depression. You need to go outside. It's like, that attitude's really toxic because it's like, no. Being outside, being active, absolutely good. Like, always beneficial. Whether it's even, like, super strenuous or even, like, barely, barely strenuous. Even going outside, just going on a walk around the block is, like, infinitely better than just being in, inside all day. Uh, anything that gets your heart racing and, like, gets the blood flowing, like, it's going to benefit you in the long term. So, yeah, you should do that when you can. And But, like, not everyone can. What if you're, like... What if you're incredibly sick or what if you are, you know, like, you know, like you're homebound for a medical reason or like, like, the, the, like you can't just decide that, like, because being outside helps that obviously everybody has to do it because it'll help everybody equally. But yeah, I mean, don't don't excuse it if you can go outside, touch some grass. Personally, having been brought up with the simplistic lesson that basic physical strength decides everything in the end. I don't have any objection to moving my body. That said... Oh boy. Amane's pointlessly powerful voice resounds across the field. In response, there's a vaguely apathetic chorus of Yeah from her classmates. <laughs> An unenthusiastic Yeah from the transparently disinterested Michiru. A dopey Yus from Yakida, unintentionally draining any shred of motivation from all who hear it. A vigorous, yeah, from Sachi, who is taking everything seriously as always, but her voice cracks shrilly at the clearly unfamiliar exercise. And finally, stony silence from Sakaki, who is sulking like a prideful middle schooler forced to participate in a child's athletic meet. Yeah, I I feel that. I feel that pretty good. The only one of the bunch with any real energy would be Abane, thrusting her fist forward to the heavens from her position on the mound. As for me, without the beginning of a clue as to what's about to take place here, I'm starting to admit it, absentmindedly stare up at the sky. And how are you doing today, everybody? Um, so, she said from the mound, so does that mean they're playing baseball? Hey, Amane? Oh, yes! I, I was right. Why are you so ridiculously fired up? Huh? うちの子たちってなんでかみんなインドア派っていうか体を動かすのが嫌いな子が多くてね。Right, so your solution is to force it. こうして体元気でテンション上げていかないとなかなかやる気出さないのよ。But <laughs> look how depressed they look. なんだ貴様ら。どいつもこいつも青病団みたいな顔しやがって。嫌いだよ。ジジイのファックの方がまだ嫌いが入っている。この腐れまっ子ども。<laughs> <laughs> 
Oh, oh, okay. So you you, you bleeped that word. <laughs> oh my gosh. Makita, what the fetch? <laughs> well, seems like we've got someone exploding with a weird sort of drill sergeant energy at least. Okay, like, here's the thing, like, remember, she's very childlike, and I talked about, like, how that's a thing and whatever, but, like, here's the other part about that. So, like, the funny juxtaposition is the fact that she's so childlike, and yet she's the most obscene of everybody here. So, but it begs the question, like, does she just not know what she's saying? She's just repeating, like, what she's heard out, like, before on the television? Or is she just incredibly self-aware because like she's childlike it has a childlike like demeanor and physical look and so like does she literally do this just to like be upsetting because like i think it's really funny i hope it's the latter what? amane she's mocking us head from above like a basketball and forcibly carries her off into the shadows Makina? いつも言ってるよね。わかりましたか。痛い、痛い、たまに。痛いってば。割れる、割れちゃうの。そんなにしたらマキナ壊れちゃうのよさ。ラメ。All <笑> Amane's voice somehow manages to be both sickly sweet and ice cold. It's enough to send shivers down my spine. Makina's bitter, heart-rending screams don't help either. I think Amane's trying to maintain a relatively kind tone of voice, but she's actually more frightening as a result. <laughs> yeah. Ugh. It crosses my mind that this could very well be described as bullying, but considering the current climate of the hypersensitivity towards such matters, I'll refrain from voicing my hasty conclusions. <laughs> That's fine by me, but what exactly is it that we are doing? Also, I'm guessing that we're not even actually doing baseball. Like, sure, she's got a helmet on, but that bat looks like a wiffle bat. And we don't have near, we don't even have enough to even do a fake team. So I'm, I'm guessing we're playing wiffle ball, but... How are you breaking up the teams? Like, three on three? Sports? I was hoping for more specific details, but playing sports in gym class hardly seems ridiculous. More like completely commonplace. Before that, I've got an unrelated question, if that's alright. Why are you the only one in the maid uniform? Don't give me that totally nonplus look. For a second, you almost convinced me that I'm the strange one here. Oh, this this there's dedication to the bit, and then there's this. God, whatever, Sashi. Sorry, let's move on. Shouldn't have asked. My mistake. The strangest things here weren't the weren't her clothes. It was me expecting anything resembling common sense from a student at this school. Okay, so what exactly does sports involve here? Wait. Kickball, soccer, volleyball with a bat? What kind of extreme sport is that? All I got out of your description is that there's no, probably a ball involved. Okay, so we really are in, like, no man's land here. Sachi hands me a large round ball she'd been holding on to. It really wouldn't be able to go very far. They hit a volleyball. With a bat. はい。打球が内野に転がったら、打者は一塁へ向かって走ります。守備側は打球をキャッチして、走者に向かって思いっきりボールを投げつけます。Okay. What if someone catches the ball on the fly? それもアウトです。その辺は野球に近いかもしれないですね。Okay. Okay. When and why did this strange game come into fashion? 別に流行ってるわけじゃないわよ。
ただうちの学校って今まで学生が5人しかいなかったから何をやるにしても人数が足りなかったのよ。Fair. And I guess I'm guessing you just kind of grabbed whatever you could get your hands on and throw it all together. So, I guess I'm guessing you just kind of grabbed whatever you could get your hands on and throw it all together. So, I guess I'm guessing you just kind of grabbed whatever you could get your hands on and throw it all together. So, I guess I'm guessing you just kind of grabbed whatever you could get your hands on and throw it all together. So, I guess I'm guessing you just kind of grabbed whatever you could get your hands on and throw it all together. So, I guess I'm guessing you just kind of grabbed whatever you could get your hands on. See, then you can't complain if we actually called you out on it. Then don't complain when I blame you. <laughs> okay, so it was unintentional then. You didn't expect it to go this far. You just kind of thought you should rotate or something. So, if you have a good idea, you can't do it. さっさと始めてほしいのだけれど。What about a m a r e Makina? いるわよ、ここに。引っこ抜けっかと思ったのよさ。I'm sure. What? What exactly? 首とか、魂とか。<笑> a m a r e なによ、教育でしょこの子ってば、注意してあげないと、どんどん汚い言葉を覚えて、バンバン使いたがるんだから。Okay, well, well how is she learning it then? Like, is she, I'm guessing that somebody's paying some kind of example, or she's just inherently far dirtier than you like to admit. Are you her mother or what? I think my voice cracked there. And so, after 15 minutes of wasted time with Amane's second shout of, all right, let's do this, our bewildering match of mystery extreme sports begins. Though the impartial results of rock, paper, scissors matches, the teams are divided as follows Bear team. Pitcher, So Amane. Catcher, Sakakita Yubiko. Fielder, Irusu Makina. Rabbit team. Why is it, why is it bear versus rabbit?、Oh, okay, 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 whatever. Pitcher, Kazuma Yuji. Catcher, Komene Sachi. Fielder, Mats,、uh, Matsu,、uh, Matsushima Michiru. Matsushima Michiru. Our rabbit team ended up being first to bat. The, lead, the, the leadoff batter dons a softball helmet. Great. Grabs a colorful metal bat, takes her place at the batter's box. Okay, so it's a colorful bat, but it is an actual baseball bat. Well, metal one at least. <laughs> With a grating, high pitched shout, Michiru thrusts her bat out to point the, out the,、uh, at the pitcher's mound, where Amane settles into her stance with the volleyball in hand. What is this? Considering how apathetic she was, Michiru's gotten surprisingly into it now that the game started. Eh, Michiru sama wa nanto y i m a s k a Toriaz nandemo kirate mite, nani demo mendo oksagate mire tokoro kara hajime re hito nandeskedo. But once you get her started, she gets、uh, really into it. Iza hajimate shimaiba, ichiban muki ni naru kata deskara. That's funny. I see, but I'm willing to bet she's also the, fir- the first one to get bored. Yeah, yeah. Unaware of the critical analysis she's receiving from her teammates, Michiru takes a few vigorous practice swings and glares up at Amane. For what? Watching Michiru stamp her feet in frustration at the batter's box, I whisper to Sachi, who's sitting next to me on the bench. So, what happened last time? Hi. Ano, Zenkai no Jigio de Michiru sama wa Amane san kara, it den mo toruko to ka de kina katan des. So, re den ma, si ai shu ryo go ni o k i na koe de. Kono o me wa, it's ka bankai suru kara oboe te ina sai. Right. Ah. Disgrace tends to be something you want to replay, repay, not regain. I guess the words are kind of similar. Michiru must have gotten all excited and shouted out a garbled sentence before she even knew what she was saying. Yeah, sounds like me. <laughs> just a thought here. Might Michiru be something of an idiot? <laughs> oh, oh, you just now coming to this idea. Again, sounds like me. Yeah, sorry, didn't intend to distract you. We'll keep quiet, so please remain as much a disgrace as you like. <laughs> 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 
<laughs> As Michiru screeches like a drugged monkey and brandishes her bat overhead, Amane's first pitch sails over the plate. It is impressive you can miss a volleyball. Like, that's the thing that makes baseball difficult, is that it's a it's a small target that's moving very quickly. And, like, unless it's pitched very kindly, it can be really tough to, like, even know what if you should swing or not, let alone, like, hitting it properly. It's a volleyball. I don't know how you could miss. <laughs> Receiving the return throw from Sakaki, Amane carefully finds her foot foothold on the pitcher's mound, a fearless smile on her face. <laughs> With that intense shout, Michiru takes a firm hold of her bat and fixedly watches Amane's pitching motion. Looking closely, Michiru gets the position of her hands on the bat reversed, but I mentioned that now I get the feeling her only response would be another shut it. Guess I'll just watch over her gallant battle with the silent respect. <laughs> Amane twists her long limbs into a sidearm motion. The volleyball soars towards the squatting Sakaki's hands at the ideal velocity and angle. <laughs> Whiff. With an explosion of energy, Michiru swings her bat at full force, but tragically, she cuts through empty air a good 10 centimeters above the top of the ball, her blunt twin tail swinging aimlessly behind her. I don't know, maybe because you weren't even looking at your target? Michiru slams her bat at home plate towards her in a towering rage. Hey, Mishiru. You've got your hands wrong. Huh? You're batting right, so your right hand should be on top. You've got it backward. Okay, sure, sure. You're obviously clueless. Hold it with your right fist higher on the bat, your left fist below. <laughs> I'm ready, hold on! <laughs> As Michiru bears her fighting spirit, Amane's face briefly suggests a dubious, are you sure about that? But she's not the type to think too hard about that sort of thing. Her expression soon gives way to a smirking grin. <laughs> She force, forcefully swinging the ball up to her right hand, Amane takes a step forward on the mound, throwing the movement of her entire body into the pitch. The ball flies out of Amane's hand, whistling through the air directly at its target, which is Michiru. Michiru-sama! She's gonna freaking kill her! Michiru, anticipating the bean ball, pulls back half a step with her pivot leg and swings her bat at a wide arc. Michiru vigorously strokes the stroke of the bat, catches the ball beautifully on the sweet spot, sending it flying back toward Damane on the mound. There's no sense to Sachi, please! Well, that's what she screamed, so I would assume so. Exactly where and how this thing became a legend is a question for another day. The ball rushes straight towards uh, Mane, who is still in an awkward position from releasing her pitch. That thing's gonna hit her. Or so I thought for a split second. Amane nimbly recovers and takes a firm stance as the ball approaches her. She's going to catch it. <laughs> Are you going to like, like, like spike it volleyball style? Turning to the side, she swings back with her left elbow and unleashes the firm right-handed fist stab in model, in model karate form. Oh, okay, even better. Which a resounding thud, the ball is sent flying back toward where Michiru stands in the batter box. <sighs> what is this? <laughs> Michiru fires it right back. Right off the bat, and we're already find ourselves in a deadlock, or rather, what the hell this is with development. I'm sort of reminded of those martial arts matches where both fighters run into the center of the ring at the first gong, stop dead, and just start bashing away each other, but 
Where did things go from here? Are they planning to report, repeat pitcher paybacks until they just run out of steam? I can't read the next move. A strange game. There's no apparent path to victory for either side. Hey, Sashi. Hi. Nandesho. What exactly is a pitcher pack? So, osoraku desu kedo, Maki-chan wa shita ga mijikai no de pitcher gaishi to iyou toshite serifu o kanda dake ka to. Hmm, I see. Onno! Pitcher gaishi 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 gaishi! Nanto! Pitcher I'm going to be hearing this in my dreams tonight. Sparks continue to fly as the battle to the death between the mound and batter's box continues along a repetitive course. But, I, I mean, what exactly are we getting all worked up over? It's too darn hot for this. But I suppose women have their own battles they must, that must be fought to the bitter end. This is clearly a contest between two truly indomitable spirits. By the way, Sachi? Hi, what is it? Just how long is this feudal, feudal exchange going to continue? Well, if those are the conditions, and I'm guessing Michiru is going to either mess up or get bored first. Katsamane seems like she's the definition of tenacity. Truly a thrilling edge of your seat battle of the wills. Mind if I use this opportunity to go buy a drink? No, think I'll get it myself this time. At my word, Sachi answers me with a searching glare. Uh, he was gonna go pull a I'm just going out for some milk and cigarettes. At the thought, sorry, through me, runs through my head. I make eye contact with Sakaki, who's still crouched behind the plate. So there was a previous offender, eh? I won't argue that. I, I, I tend to agree. Well, can't argue with that. <laughs> so we resign ourselves to watch over the battle to the end, with the calm gaze of the elderly watching their uh, with the calm gazes of the elderly watching their overly energetic grandchildren skip rope with all their might. But just as I'm beginning to think this fiery clash of pride between Michiru and Amane might truly never end, the conclusion arrives in an unexpected form. <laughs> <laughs> so many. <laughs> oh, oh, fetch. What the fetch? Hey, Sachi. Hi, Nandesho. What does that god just now signify? So, osoraku desu kereto, Amane san ga ashi o suberasete, ashikubi o kujita oto dewa nai desu ka? It's that painful, whatever it was. Like, genuinely. I see. Wait, shouldn't that be, should that be my reaction here? So, isn't that kind of bad? Sachi stares blankly at me for a moment. After a beat, her eyes go wide and her mouth springs open. <laughs> As we hurriedly jump off the bench, Makina is already rushing up to Mane, who's currently writhing on the mound. <laughs> it was good to know you while we could. Maybe we can actually, like, you know, go to our bedroom and not be, like, ambushed. <laughs> Although it might look like a slapstick comedy scene, if you squint, the atmosphere is actually pretty tense until a burst of uh, out of place laughter breaks it. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> she just did the, the, the haughty laugh. The, uh, well, I, it's, it's a, it said ha ha ha, and she said it more ha ha, but it's that oh ho 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 kind of laugh. Michiru points towards the mound with her right hand, her left hand repeat, resting on her hip, her proud face the image of woman triumph. <laughs> You didn't score yet. Should you really be striking a victory pose right now? You're completely burned out yourself. Sachi! Sanso! Sanso, 
Her faint voice abruptly failing her altogether, Michiru's body begins to shake violently. She collapses on her knees and spot with a slump. I like I, I was wondering why it put like that phrase in the brackets it's because it was actually going to be in English which is interesting because like I've heard interspersed English but maybe this case it's very it's an uncommon phrase because like it's interest like random English words appearing in conversation sounds like it's a fairly like maybe not common but like relatively reasonable expectation in Japan uh, but Maybe because this one's an actual phrase, it was specialized. It was cute, though. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. Michiru scatters sparkling vomit onto the ground with a sickening gurgle. Would this be the so-called double KO? So, Sachi, in this case, we can declare one who stands up inside the ten count the winner? Yeah, no. もう、そういった場合じゃないと思います。すみません、風見さん。私は道ちる様の様子を見ますので、天音さんの方お願いできますか。ロジャー。じゃあ、どうした?天音、大丈夫?今なんかグキって曲がっちゃいけない方に足が
I'm leaving command of the field to you. Adjust your tactics to the situation demands. Can you handle it, class representative? For some reason, maybe instinctively reacting to my tone, Sachi raises a hand in salute toward me. All right, here we go, Amane. Not a problem. This isn't something you need to apologize for. I thought about that response, but ultimately decided against it. The, wound ten the wounded tend to grow timid towards those around them. Better to avoid wording that uh, that might make her think of herself as baggage, burdening others. Don't want to increase her anxiety. It's like, I like how he's saying, like, like the wounded tend to grow timid. But like, that makes sense. It's probably a self-defense mechanism. Like, maybe back somewhere in our lizard brain. Like, we understand, like, wait, if we can't fight or run, the next best thing is to try and garner sympathy. <laughs> I keep up a flow of communication, standard procedure to ensure the wounded doesn't faint out of pain. Where's the infirmary, Amane? Do you know? We'll be there soon. Try to endure it for the moment. <laughs> Don't make light of a leg injury. Soldiers get abandoned when they can't walk. <laughs> Don't worry, Japan won't desert you, and I won't leave you to die either. I mean, she's tall, so she'll be heavy in that regard, but she's also really, like, thin and in shape, pretty much. I, I'd say I doubt she's that heavy. Not particularly, five bags of rice or so at most. Just... Well, how much is a bag of rice typically? Five bags of rice. I would guess standard 20, 25 pounds. So, yeah, I'd say maybe 25 pounds. So, if, if five bags of rice would be 125. Like, that's, that's pretty light, really. I'm used to carrying around heavy luggage on my back. I can estimate weight from the feeling on my shoulders. What? You don't like... Oh, you know what? Actually, maybe 30 pounds is a bit more accurate because I'd put her at, a, like, 180, which, like... I guess that is pretty stocky, but, again, she's supposed to be pretty tall, so... It wouldn't be unreasonable. Well, although 180 is a bit... No, it's probably 25 because a 180 is, like, for a six-foot-tall, like, guy. I'm guessing for a girl, that would not be an appropriate rate weight for her build. This <laughs> Don't you know he's just honest? You're lighter than I expected. Probably only looked heavy from your height and that oversized chest. You've got long legs too. That must have thrown me off. My impression was that you'd be comfortably above 60 kilos. Okay. Stupid American brain doesn't know what that is. I'm going to do the translation real quick because I'm curious. Okay, so um, so 60 kilograms is 132 pounds. Like, uh, you know, imperial pounds. As she speaks, Abani sharply tightens her arms into a chokehold around my neck. Look, stop thrashing. You're the only one crying if I drop you. I come to a brief halt on the spot and lift Amane's body, which has been sliding down my back, up more firmly around my shoulders. <laughs> I don't like where this is going. What are you planning, woman? In the next moment, Amane gently closes her eyes, still clinging tightly to my neck. She brings her lips close. Oh my gosh. Hey! I didn't, I'd take an immediate evasive action in response to her suspicious movements, but Amane's lips nonetheless press against my cheek. <laughs> the heck is wrong with this woman? I've got half a mind to drop her on the hallway floor, but we're dealing with an injured party here. I turn my head to the side to stare into Amane's face, finding her blushing in apparent embarrassment. I thought I met her for the first time at the school, but maybe... <laughs> Okay, so that's interesting. So, he's having a weird, like, flashbacky thing here where he thinks he might have met her somewhere. Okay. Again, why with all this thick... It keeps d dangling breadcrumbs of really interesting plot potential, and it doesn't never follow through with it. 
It's nothing. No matter how long or carefully I study Amane's features, nothing comes to mind. I was entertaining the possibility she might have been some childhood friend I'd parted from in tears or what have you, but I'm pretty well convinced that isn't the case. Which would leave... Do I look like a lover you were tragically separated from in your previous incarnation? Is that it? <laughs> okay. What, having a previous life? Plowing her lips, Amane knocks the fist against my head with a solid thunk. What are you, anyway? Yeah, my short-term memory's perfectly fine, thanks. Every time Amane speaks, her soft breath strikes my ear. Is it just my imagination, or has her body temperature slowly been rising while I've had her on my back? If she's suffering a partial fracture of that ankle, it might make her body being mean her body's beginning to generate a fever, and I gotta move on. Again, lifting Amane further up on my back, I hurry to the infirmary. Doc, emergency case, get a move on. Still carrying Amane, I push my way forcefully into the room and shout for attention, but there's no one here whatsoever, much less a doctor. Why isn't anyone here? Everyone take a break at once? There's no doctor. You mean they haven't hired anyone for all the staff room? Uh, for all the staff this room? To, for uh, That's me. Let me start out again. You mean they haven't hired anyone at all to staff this room? For the time being, I lower Amane onto a nearby bed. I don't know what I want for my thumbnail anymore, but uh, hang on. Wait a minute, they can get the drugs, but they can't get a single, like, nurse to work here? That seems really odd. Well, fine. I'll take care of the treatment. I learned first aid in my previous school. I can handle something like this, at least. I kneel in front of Amane's leg, un untie and remove her anklet shoe, then take her red, swollen right ankle into my hand. I'm going to move it. Tell me if it hurts. <laughs> her ankle's slender, but compared to her uninjured left foot, it's clearly inflamed pretty badly. I bend Amane's ankle to various angles, carefully searching for the location of her injury. It's not fractured, after all, but I think the ligaments might have been stretched or the joint capsule ruptured. Ugh. Ligaments stretched, that's essentially the definition of a sprain, just needs time. Those can usually recover, especially when you're young. Capsule rupture? That's a bit more problematic. Could mean surgery, but probably not. Taking a roll of medical, medical tape from the infirm infirmary's first aid kit, I loosely wrap around Amane's ankle, restricting the ra range of the joint can move. Then retrieve ice from the freezer, stuff into a bag, and press it over the injury through a towel, relieving the heat of the inflammation. I mean... Well, just a bit. I'm accustomed to treating sprains and burns, at least. When I was a kid, I was getting hit pretty much every day, and I still get my fair share of injuries even now. That yeah, sounds cool. Not. Spare me. How exactly am I a nice guy? I just treated an injury. Anybody would do that much. Hmm. To be honest, Amane's words are pretty close to the bullseye. When human beings find kindness, they naturally take advantage of it. Before they realize it, they've grown dependent on that kindness. They lose their ability to function without it. If I don't, if I disappeared, what would you do with yourself? My master spoke those words to me when I was still a child. That's actually a fair point, because normally he is really ambivalent and, like, brushes people off. He's just kind of like, all right, I leave, bye, like, take care of yourself or whatever. Like, he doesn't deal with nonsense. But the thing is, like, this isn't nonsense. It's a genuine injury. Now, if she came back to our room faking an injury and demanding to be nursed, then we would treat her like that. All right, then. I'll be going. I raise my right hand in farewell. Amani grabs my clothes firmly to prevent my retreat. Oh, boy. Just a Am I the only one who thinks there should be a slightly more nervous about being alone with a teenage male in the room? Which has a bed? With her leg injured to the point that she can't walk? I mean, 
When you put it like that, oh dang. <laughs> what do you want from me? You have something to say, then spit it out already. I mean, oh, what? Okay? What? <laughs> Why are you saying this? That's when? Okay. Huh. Then let me ask, what part of me did you fall in love with? That makes no sense. We're like the opposite. We're like the definition of a man who can take care of himself. He literally has done that. Like, look at what we just did. We're like the opposite of... Like, I, I don't get this, girl. I see. Can't say I have a problem with reliable women myself. What does this girl think she's grinning about? Momentarily speechless with amusement, I hold my right palm to my forehead and run it through my hair. Look, is teasing me that much fun? That's an interesting reaction because at the same time, like... He didn't say no. He didn't shut her down completely. At least that's the impression I got. The impression I got was he said, like, why are you teasing me? Because he just assumes she's just messing with him because she tends to do that. I think it's fairly reasonable to assume that, like, she might not be being 100% honest. I mean, she's in a vulnerable state. I, some people just deal with vulnerability by cracking jokes and messing with people. What? What? <laughs> I this conversation's gone so derailed. If I were, if I were, I'm, I'm a speechless too. Like if I were Yuji, I'd be like, I don't even know what to say here. I regret to inform you that we're not hiring big sisters at the present time. We anticipate no vacancies until doomsday. No. <laughs> That's my line, idiot. Shifting my grip on the ice pack, I give him a slap on the ankle. Well, and you're being crazy, baby. By the way, I gotta say, Amane pout face, that's pretty adorable. Let's see. If you make it a yes or no question, then yes, I think I'd be safe. Say, I, I'd be safely on the enjoys bullying girls side. I don't know. I'm getting the feeling you're more like a chameleon. Because it feels like you keep trying to be whatever we would like. That's disconcerting because that makes me feel like all of a sudden we aren't seeing the real Amane. Like, she might be hiding behind, like, building assumptions. Like, she projects an image that she wants to be perceived as. And she also wants to, for some reason, is really heavily dedicated in trying to be, like, in a very close relationship with us. So, like, boyfriend, girlfriend, she'd be, like, really happy with. But she's, like, immediately, like, she doesn't try to fight us when she said, when we, we, we imply that we might not be interested. Instead, she jumps right to being a big sister. Now, like, that, that, that like, it would make me, it'd be disconcerting. Which is interesting, because it's, like, on one hand, like, you always feel like it'd be nice to just have a girl who would flirt with you so openly and, like, make it feel like you're not playing games. But the problem is that it gets to a point where it suddenly becomes games again, where it feels like, this doesn't feel real. Like, why? Like, I can understand, like, being attracted to somebody and wanting to get to know them better, but, like, she's making it sound like she literally would do whatever we wanted. And to the point where we're, like, we're, like, we imply that we're more of a sadistic type of, like, individual. Like, that's the, that's the type of, like, back and forth we tend to have. And she immediately is like, well, I'm a masochist. It's like, that's not the impression I ever got. Like, she seems very driven and seems like she would maybe not be this... Like, okay, maybe she's right. It's just tough, though, because it's like, I don't know where to put her. And like, she keeps jumping around in the way I perceive her. It's very confusing. 
Just what do you want from me exactly? And see, that's also not fair. Like, a guy or girl should be able to say no without trying to call into question, like, either, like, like, it's, it's almost like she's trying to make him feel bad for saying no, but that's not fair because you can have a lot of reasons to say no and it might not have anything to do with you. <laughs> I'm not trying to reject you, but don't you think you're rushing things here? Mm, I don't know. I'd say if you were like dating and that were the case, maybe. But jumping from like not in a relationship to a relationship is kind of a big deal. We're not talking about politics here. Starting off by asking for the sky and dragging out the concessions as a compromise? Is this negotiations? Do you really think you're a politician? Hmm. Ha. Huh. Huh. I drop my shoulders in an exaggerated gesture and heave a heavy sigh. I'm sure this girl tends to continue this aggravated pursuit until I tell her what she wants to hear. It would be serious pain in the butt if she tried to push me any harder than this. At a, some, as a point of comp compromise, this is probably right at the limit of my tolerance. Yeah, yeah, I got it. If you want to play the big sister that badly, I'll go along with it. There is a mirror in front of me so as, as I speak these words. I'd be staring into the face of a man with a word reluctant stapped on his forehead. Might this have been a hasty decision? Indifferent to my shame and regret, Amane beams happily, dropping her hand on top of her... Ha dropping her hand on top of my head with a gentle thump in the grand, big sisterly style. Oh gosh. Uh, why can't we just be friends for a bit? Don't think this means you can pet me pet my head whenever you feel like it. Although I don't go so far as to push him on his hand away, I can't say that I'm especially. Pl it's a, I find it. It's an. It is an expression. What is wrong with me today? I can't say this is an especially pleasant feeling. Dutiful and clever dogs, as a rule, don't wag their tails when someone other than their masters pat their head. That was interesting. I prefer eating my meals alone. It's just easier that way. For one thing, I don't have to go through all the hassle of pretending to enjoy what I'm eating. In the first place, there's no cafeteria or lunch counter in this school. The facilities themselves apparently exist, but after all... You can count on the number of students and permanent staff here on your fingers of your hands. Spending the money to run a lunchroom for the benefit of that small a number of people would be completely ineffective in any way you look at it. So then you might ask, how does lunch work at this place? It's a pretty simple system. When we arrive at the classroom in the morning, we can write our names on a notebook on the podium. Every lunch period, a supplier delivers food to everyone who signed up. Box lunch catering, as they call it. Of course, it's completely up to every individual student whether we take advantage of the catering. Because this menu is basically left up to the supplier, it's possible, to, it's possible to sign up only when they're offering something you want. Personally, I haven't asked for a delivery even once. It's not that I'm worried about saving money or that I can't trust food made by others. I don't have any religious principles against eating meat either. I'm just not interested enough in what, I, in what I eat to bother. They say it's a common result of being raised in a food poor environment and considering the time I spent living together with my master and her crappy cooking, I guess it's only natural. A full stomach of adequate nutrition is all I need. Incidentally, the lunch I prepared for myself today is three plain salt rice balls. My side dish, also a quick job. After frying onions and garlic, I threw them together to cook with some canned tomatoes and kidney beans, adding a packet of chili powder for seasoning. Oddly enough, that doesn't sound that bad. As my master used to say, humans aren't that fragile if you won't starve as long as you got beans to eat. But I guess going with nothing but the basics is a bit too bleak for me. No point in living like a monk, so I've always bought an apple for I've I've also brought an apple for dessert. Kind of feels like I'm eating nothing but red stuff, but there's no point worrying about a meal's appearance. This is perfectly adequate for my needs. Oi! Yuji! So now she's dropping the honorific. Uh, Don't just call me Yuji, woman. This is the definition of weird already. I don't remember giving you permission to not use one. Okay, it's now forbidden. 
It's interesting that you feel like you have some kind of bargaining power at this current point in the conversation. <laughs> what do you want? Uh, oh, that's, that's a tough one. Spare me. Not even my parents ever called me that. Ridiculous. Do whatever you want. And you need something? Huh? No, I'll pass. Take your volunteer work to Makina, why don't you? もちろん、マキナも一緒だよ。マキナ。お、読んだか。うん。何がさ、その言葉遣いはどうだろう。何お兄ちゃんもお弁当。何食べてるのよさ。聞いちゃいねえし。おにぎりとリンゴとこの
And come to think of it, the short-tempered, vaguely masculine side of her personality makes a lot of sen more sense knowing that her father's from a blue-collar neighborhood like Honda. God, I can super sympathize with that. Like, I've had a very drastic change in my diet. If you've seen my old videos, I've lost a lot of weight. And part of that change, it just it was an overhaul of like what my eating habits were. And one of the things that ended up happening is that because I consumed a lot less meat, like I, over time, I just lost a plate, like the taste for it. Like, I don't even like the smell of most meat anymore. Like I'll still eat fish um, and like, I mean, I can have meat. Like it's not like I can stay away from it completely. I'm not like trying to be vegan or vegetarian. The closest thing I am is pescatarian, but like even then it's like I'll still eat something with like maybe like broth, like chicken broth or beef broth. And, you know, that's definitely like got components of, of animal inside them. But like just the actual meats, like the flesh of it, I just I've just lost that taste. Like I just don't really crave it anymore. It doesn't like appeal to me anymore. So I, I just kind of avoid it. You don't eat meat, Amane? Now that she mentions it, I don't see much in the way of meat dishes inside this box. Bit of, bit of a surprise. Had you down for our carnivore for sure. Yeah, that's weird, but okay. I mean, I'm weird too, so... What? Your breast's getting too heavy? Slow <laughs> Ah, well, I guess you can't exactly shred inches the way you can pounds. Cutting back on meat now isn't going to make her any shorter, but if Amani keeps a careful eye on things, it might help maintain the status quo. Bit of a reactionary approach, considering she's already pretty darn tall, but I guess that's just your typical passive Japanese mindset at work. As JB once told me, there aren't many Japanese who would go to the dentist before their teeth start to hurt. Yeah, I'm not a huge fan of meat myself. More importantly, I'll take care of my own food expenses. You don't have to worry about my tastes. Makina's got a pretty solid deal here. Why are you so determined to stick your nose into my eating habits? What? Oh gosh, we are really like a family here now. What? Oh my gosh. I don't get it. In other words, they just want to play house. Or maybe somebody, say the principal, ordered them to become best friends with Ka uh, Kazumi Akun for some reason. Either way, I'd prefer to maintain some distance. I, I can't be casual about this as a, as a normal student might be. I have too many things I'd like to keep to myself. I'm used to simple food. Well, I don't know, nothing special. When I was a young kid, I might not have gotten into this much of a way of luxury, but I ate normal meals. My current emphasis on low effort and nutritious food is a product, a product of the way I, they did things at my previous school. Pardon my French, but at this place, the principal was eat first, Crap fast in the morning. We were kicked out of bed at 6 a.m. sharp for roll call, exercise, running, and then it was double time to the mess hall. Yeah, this is military. It was just military. We had a few minutes to eat breakfast, take your time, and you'd get a dressing down from one of the seniors, so everyone stuffed what food they could grab into their mouth and forced it down their throats as fast as possible. Lunch was slightly different, and that sheer amount of food they gave us became a challenge. The piles of meat and vegetables would have been hard enough to handle alone, but they'd throw a heaping bowl of rice as well. We were expected to cram all that into our stomachs in about 10 minutes, wash it down with some miso soup. Naturally, we weren't allowed to leave a scrap of food on our plates, vomit it up, and they tell you to push it all back down again. Ugh. In other words, the taste was not exactly the first thing on our minds. I never enjoyed eating that much in the first place, so once my meals became outright painful, approaching food as a purely business-like fashion felt like a natural response. Nothing but rice and beans for lunch might seem sad to Amane, but not for fighting my... But not fighting my friends for a can of food, I uh, and I'd even got fruit as a dessert. By my standards, this is a high-class, elegant meal. I mean, I mean, 
uh, food can be fun, but like, wouldn't it be nice if you didn't have to eat? Or like, well, I guess what would be nicer is like if eating had no consequence, but I don't know. My face is putting you off from food. I suggest you don't look at it. Nothing. Yeah, you're right about this one. Sorry. <laughs> what, you demand something and then when I finally go along with it, you immediately doubt it? <laughs> well, can't hurt to play along once in a while. To tell the truth, I had a similar discussion in the past with another pushy woman. Ended up turning into an outright fight. A certain busybody German had this habit of coming to the mountain cabin where I lived with my master, mainly to subject us both to shrill nagging sessions. She'd barge in, clean up, with, uh, clean up without ever asking permission, make food nobody asked for, and then leave just as quickly. I think that woman must have got some sick pleasure out of it. One day in particular, I got pretty indignant when she put away some book I was in the middle of reading. I ended up firing off the line, You're not my mom, with predictably unpleasant results. Well, it wasn't exactly the first time we'd fought. It's true that I found her incessant meddling annoying, so I honestly told her as much. Serious mistake. The woman in question, already a full-grown adult, spat out the supremely childish words, Fine, see if I care. And then, of all things, she broke down tears, leaving me in a completely bewildered panic. <laughs> Since that disastrous experience, I've learned a lot about how to handle women. The first lesson, knowing when to back down is crucial. That's very fair. Don't resist a woman's kindness. When a woman gets worked up, words won't get through to her. And the most troublesome lesson of all, women of the busybody type, remember the smallest grudges through all of eternity. Oh. I'm happy you're willing to make lunch for me, but don't feel like you have to do it every day. I'd appreciate it if you have the time. See, okay. Another really, another really weird thing about Amane, like, she's so pushy and she always has this facade. She has this, like... She almost has this, like, pre-prepared kind of, like, way she wants to present herself. A way that she wants to view the world and the world for you, her. Oddly, though, whenever she encounters, like, real genuine emotion, like, when she's receiving genuine help from us, when we're suddenly willing to backtrack and admit that we're sorry and to ask politely for her to actually help us with this in this situation, um... She was super, she's super willing to be like completely nude and she's willing to like throw herself at us. But then the instant we implied that we actually might take her up on it, she got really flustered and self-conscious. That all screams to me that, that a lot of this must be an act because if she was genuine when she was constantly berating us, being like, hey, let us call, like, call, call me your, your older sister. Uh, let me make food for you. And he finally says, all right, sure, let's do it. She's more like, kind of scared she's like oh gosh this is actually happening it's like she's almost doesn't know what to do when people actually follow through and call her out on her own like expressed desire so that again it, like it makes me feel like there's a facade here of some kind i know your intentions were good amane i don't have a reason to refuse that would satisfy her not one i can bring up here at least anyway i'm not looking to make an atmosphere in the classroom awkward over something like this as for amane I don't know how she interpreted my sudden change of tone, but she sounds downright contrite about her aggressiveness. We're both being mature about things all of a sudden. Guess the two of us really are still capable of being reasonable with each other. Probably a good sign. I like this translation, Hungry Hombre. You shut your face. Well, healthy appetite's a good thing. Oh, I don't really mind giving her the apple, but I thought you said Makina didn't have that big of an appetite. I've known people like that. Sounds like a bit of an exaggeration. 
I dropped my hand on Makina's head with a thump. Where would the kid be storing all that in this tiny body? No. Strange. Maybe she works like a mole or a rhino, inefficient at absorbing energy from her food, so she has to keep stuffing herself while she'll starve to death. For a second, I thought I, well, I saw a shadow fall across Amade's face, but she and Makina quickly get to work. They drag nearby desks and chairs up to mine, creating one large island. Yeah, okay, so, again, there's something weird going on here with Amade. Like, the more we learn about her, the more she seems just in... Like, there's something... There's something going on. Amani pushes one of the stacked lunch boxes at me. Inside, there's deep fried tofu covered in red bean paste, accented with thinly sliced boiled daikon radish. Not to mention broccoli with sesame sauce, fried burdock root, Kyoto style grilled mackerel, a chicken meatloaf. Together, they make up an amazingly well balanced and elaborate meal. Holding back at this point would be downright rude. I thank her for the food and extend my chopsticks to the sliced daikon radish. Hmm. Amani's cooking is somewhat light on the seasoning. I'd noticed as much before when I had dinner in her room, but to my tongue, used to preservatives and artificial coloring, her food seems extremely gentle. Probably because I haven't eaten real home cooking in a long time, it tastes even better than I expected. Delicious. Hmm? What? Amane, you really are an excellent cook. That's <laughs> why yeah, true. The dinner in her room was a simple stew, and the main ingredients were just some of the off-the-shelf fish products, so there wasn't any real surprises. But this meal has a vaguely nostalgic sense of home cooking. The taste calls up a faded memory of the meals my mother served me. Honestly, it's a bit of an emotional jolt. That's pretty cool. Oh boy. No, I'll feed myself, thanks. Even eating with others like this is co as a con concession on my part. This is going way past ticklish and into serious awkward territory. Makina thrusts an omelet toward my nose with a clumsy grip on her chopsticks. I instinctively pull back and turn a frank scowl in Amane's direction. Hey, Amane, do something about this girl, or more so my glance would, in, it would it was intended to convey, but instead Amane bites her lower lip lightly and an irrepressible smile spreads across her face. Grabbing a uh, Kinpira burdock root with her chopsticks, she presses it towards my face, which I turned away from Makina's attack. Hi? Um... Oh no. Brutes! Et tu? That's my line! Caught between a rock and a hard place, theoretically, I should grin, gain distance, then suppress each target individually. Step one, I need a chance to take evasive action. I have to create some sort of distraction. Everyone in this room is now a potential weapon of last resort. My frantic gaze settles on Sakaki, sitting alone in the silence, picking food from a, ca a catered lunch box with her chopsticks. Sakaki, I'm begging you! As Sakaki glances toward us out of the corner of her eye, I send her a desperate SOS with my gaze. Her own silent message follows. Please, don't think you're going to drag me into this. A truly cold and heartless answer. A brief, please try to eat a little more silently from your mouth, but could save could save my life, and you abandoned me? Is this the way uh, uh, Mihama Academy's management treats its students? I've just witnessed with my own eyes a tragic moment. Long years trusting a superpower umbrella, forbidden from developing a military, still shedding blood and sweat in defense of our nation, all comes to naught. Sakaki, Sakaki, my friend and ally. In the end, I was nothing to you but a shield against the menace of Amane and Makina. A sacrifice to suffer in your place when the time came. <clears throat> no reason to despair. Kazuma Yuji, from the start, you were a mere pawn in a great game. A dog, kept alive in the whims of your master. And you threw away, it, and you threw away the right to expect mercy from God a long time ago. 
didn't didn't you know as much? He's getting really philosophical here, like he's literally about to like be just cut to pieces. It's too late now to think of natural interests. National interest, all that's left to me is to embrace this moment of reckoning. Endure the endurable, suffer the insufferable, find the cool serenity of still water. What? See, but that's the thing. It's like, she's kind of right, but she's taking it to, like, extreme. And she's like, oh, so you're not like this. Well, maybe everything I'm doing is a complete waste of time, and then maybe you just hate me and want me to go away. It's like, what? You could have stopped the first sentence. To do what? What do you want? Okay, so something happened in your past. Who is this woman? <laughs> what is with her? There's like I literally as first saw her just being like, ah, oh, just being kind of crazy, but now I'm like convinced Who is she? And what the fetch has she gone through? She's implying that some horrific thing has happened in her past, but she grew up with loving parents who cooked her food and taught her how to cook food. She's beautiful and she flaunts her body, but gets embarrassed to the instant that we like show her any level of actual re uh, like reciprocation. She's a box of contradictions. This pseudo Albani woman's too clever at times. When she puts it like that, no matter how badly I want to escape the situation, there's no way I can bring myself to run away. That ruthless way she cuts off my path of retreat is nostalgic in a way. Reminds me of a bit of, uh, uh, reminds me of a, my big sister. Then again, compared to Kazuki, I guess Amane's methods are almost charming. And that thought passes through my head, the tension naturally drains from my body, and I let my mouth fall open. Uh, the Kenpria she throws in my mouth has the same simple light seasoning, that same taste of home. I see? Yeah. The food is good, to be sure, but what's with this stifling feeling? A soft taste of home cooking, a meal spent with others, and understand this feeling of harmony to be the kind of happiness. And in counter reaction to the peaceful atmosphere, a dark thought spreads through my mind. I shouldn't be sitting here. My chest feels tight, drawing breath is uncomfortable. Oh, maybe he needed this, actually. He feels like he doesn't deserve to be happy and to have comfort or peace. And he's gone through like military stuff, so maybe that's it. Maybe he's just done so much in his life and gone through so much trauma and caused so much trauma that he just doesn't feel like he's entitled to having a normal life. But then again, the whole point of him coming to the school was to have something of a normal life. I'm off balance. I know exactly why. I've spent one and a half years since my master's death keeping my distance from others. In that time, I've grown starved for this sort of contact, and I don't want to admit that to myself because that means facing the question. Do I deserve an ordinary life? Do I have the right to an everyday routine existence, living for small moments of happiness? But again, you volunteered, you you asked for this, so part of you must want it. Huh? Uh, yeah. <laughs> Makina, now you sound like you're trying to prepare me. It sounds like she's trying getting ready to cook us. Look, I told you I could feed myself. I've got to get used to this sort of thing sooner or later. I want to believe that, but there's a part of me that can't. Even now, there's a nagging discomfort in the corner of my mind. There's always a side of me that accepts and, accepts and, uh, and a side of me that denies. And in that fight, the side that denies always comes out on top. I guess that's the first thing I should try to fix about myself. Is there a reason I can't stay broken? An obvious question, but I think I'll leave it for another time. Interesting. So he considers himself broken, too. Alright, I right, see something before, because we're definitely going to stop here. Yeah. I, mean, I kind of wish the music wasn't so quiet for the outro, but it's okay. So we're going to stop here. All right, Amane, you caught my interest all of a sudden. There's like, 
it keeps kind of it's almost like the story itself keeps trying to brush off all these little like hints that keeps dropping at our feet about everybody but this was a, a freaking dumpster of just amane's got something going on type of stuff it's really interesting okay i asked for plot i think we're starting to get it it's still really really trickling it out but god like it's driving me crazy what the fetch has happened to her and why is she so like why is she so determined to behave a certain way, but the facade crumbles as soon as somebody actually, like, responds in the way you would expect? It's weird. And it feels like her, like, do, do her shields drop when others, like, work with her too? Or is it just us? I mean, we're a guy, so maybe it's just a little different because, like, there's something real potentially there and she's just not used to that. I don't know, though. I'm really curious. I'm really curious to see what's going on. And I also think it's weird. It's like she understands what it's like to have had a traumatic background. She mentions that, like, specifically. Like, like how, like, false sympathy hurts more than it, like, almost hurts more than no sympathy. Or, like, not even false sympathy, but, like, sympathy that could never, like, from people who never could understand. You know, like, sympathy from the sheltered and and maybe uh oh, what's it called when you can't when you don't have an appreciation for something because you've like it's uh it's it's when you don't understand like you don't even know it starts with an i and it's when you don't know what you don't know ignorance like, sympathy from the ignorant is more painful than nothing. Because they could never understand. Okay, there we go. I got there. My brain is just rotting on the inside. But it's okay. We're getting through it. Thank you so much for being here today. I hope you enjoyed this episode. I certainly did. It's definitely on the longer side, but I really... I don't know. Like, if I'd stopped at the end of the first, like, segment, it would have been too short. I'll take too long over too short. Hopefully you don't mind. I feel like the problem with making longer content, like, I'll have people who are calling out for me, like, oh, make it longer, make it longer. It's going to take forever to finish the game. It's like, well, no, time matters. And I don't want to expect you guys to sit and watch for an hour and a half every single day or even every once a week. Like, that's a lot to ask for someone. There's a reason why TV tends to be in 30-minute blocks or even an hour block at most and my movies tend to not go to the two hour limit because there's only so much time you can ask out of people's day without it being unreasonable and so that's a big reason why i keep my my episodes relatively short but i did learn early on because i did shoot for 30 minute episodes at the beginning that that just was not going to be sustainable for like covering a story like of these types of sizes so that's why that's really why but I appreciate your support. Thank you. And if you're still listening to this, thank you so much. The fact that you're still here means the world to me. And another big thank you, of course, to my direct supporters, the patrons and, this, and the, the members. I have to get it out there and say thank you because, like, it sounds repetitive, but it genuinely, like, every time I get to this point in the video, I'm always, like, filled with so much just happiness and genuine, like, un it feels undeserved, but at the same time, it's like I started those things because i want to be able to build this into something bigger and that's like the steps to do it and i'm not going to be shy about that but it still feels like incredible to me that you find that i am worthy of your support so thank you but regardless of why you're here how long you're here or what's going on thank you for joining me and until the next video watching me have seen me next i'll see you there